welcome back to Inorganic Chemistry. In this lecture, we'll look at the group 5A elements, the nicogens. The nicogens are called this because they are choking producers. They include nitrogen, which is composes 78% of the air, and it has uh, strong pi bonds, p pi p pi bonds, and we'll see it's also able to make p pi p pi bonds with oxygen. Phosphorus means light bearing and was originally is isolated in 1669 from human urine. Arsenic has been known for thousands of years as a poison, well known in the classic movie Arsenic and Old Lace. Antimony was used by the alchemists. The Latin is stibium, and so that's where we get the symbol for antimony. Bismuth is a metal. Bismuth actually comes from the German meaning white metal. And here's a picture of a piece of bismuth that I have that's been electrolytically produced and there's a thin oxide layer which causes this coloring. As we would expect from our trends, the acidity and basicity change as we go down the group, go through the metal non-metal stair step. So nitrogen oxides are strong acids and we learn, we learn in general chemistry that nitric acid is a strong acid. But as we learned back in our acid-base chapter, it's not quite a strong acid. It doesn't quite completely dissociate in water. The phosphorus oxide forms weak acids, and we'll see that later on in the next slide. Arsenic oxide is amphoteric. Antimony oxide is also amphoteric, so it's kind of like aluminum oxides. These are in the metalloid areas. And then bismuth, as we said, is a white metal. So we would predict that bismuth oxide to be a basic compound. So as we saw in the group 4A, P pi D pi bonding becomes important in this part of the periodic table. And so in particular, our period 3 element phosphorus can make pi bonds with period 2 elements such as oxygen. And phosphorus oxides, uh, phosphates, are a very important class of compounds. Here you can see white phosphorus, one of the allotropes of phosphorus, reacting with oxygen to form this phosphorus oxide bridged cluster. With more oxygen, you can actually add more oxygen to each phosphorus by expanding the octet, as we like to talk about when we look at Lewis structures. And so what's happening, P bonds of this oxygen overlapping with the d orbitals of, of this phosphorus to make this double bond. So we can add more oxygens to this cluster. And then if we react with water, we make weak acid acids, phosphorus acid and phosphoric acid. Besides clusters of phosphorus oxides or phosphates, we can make chains of phosphates. Phosphate is important for biological systems. Uh, for example, DNA has a phosphate backbone. Just as phosphorus could make P pi D pi bonding with oxygens, it can make P pi D pi bonds with nitrogen. And so there's a whole series of compounds called phosphazines, similar to the oxides and making clusters and chains. Nitrogen, based on, as we'd expect from the uniqueness principle, of course the unique ability to make the triple bond, it also makes strong P pi, P pi bonds with oxygen, which actually then results in stabilizing almost every possible oxidation state for nitrogen. These states are also helped by the fact that the uh, electron affinity of nitrogen equals zero. So here we see a Latimer diagram in acidic solution for nitrogen ranging all the way from a plus five nitrate to the minus three in the ammonium ion, the standard reduction potentials for each of these steps. So these are all uh, accessible, which uh, leads to a lot of rich nitrogen oxide chemistry. Nitrogen oxides are unfortunately the primary component in photochemical smog.